Time for more hit lists. And I realized that by sending Inugami to the junkyard, I made him into a junkyard dog. So, apologies for that accidental pun. To Aryans, the means are justified. Now it's time to meet J.P. Drummond, who was a respectable African-American doctor. A descendant of a Creole family who went to live in the New Orleans area after the Emancipation Proclamation. Turning to a form of Louisiana voodoo to heal his patients, his desire to heal the poor and needy has backfired. Drummond has now come to Jackie, seeking protection. What does that mean? Did voodoo kill his patients? I don't know, and we're not going to find out. Also, the use of the word respectable sounds real condescending there, but... if we don't stick together. We are moving on to a new hit target, because we killed Frank Marshall. Our new guy is Cedro Valdez, a gang leader with ties to the Brotherhood. Has taken over the massive warehouse that used to print most of the city's newspaper decades ago, and turned it into a money printing operation. Every hit target has three missions associated with them. Usually one mission will be to kill them, and the other two will be to just fuck up their criminal operations. Oftentimes, the character in question will appear in the main Vendetta's campaign, with little to no fanfare. This is how we find out who they are, get a little more backstory on them. Today, we'll just be going into his warehouse, killing a lot of his guys. Listen. These mutts are backed directly by the Brotherhood, so don't be sleeping on the job. Let's send them a message by taking them out when they least expect it. No, we take the fight to them. Yep, they aren't expecting us yet because we haven't launched any uh, other attacks on them, as will occur in the main campaign. There are ten missions that are exclusive to the hit list. Four of them are co-op only, so... Unless I figure out a lot of technical elements and find a way to record co-op stuff, we won't be seeing those. We will be seeing the other six. Two for each of the non-Shoshana characters. I'm getting too old for this. You may notice that I'm kind of avoiding talking about J.P. Drummond. His special power is ridiculously cool, though. He has the black hole from the first game. His execution ain't half bad, either. All I'm really gonna say about him is read his subtitles whenever he speaks. They're written in a just super racist accent, which thankfully the voice actor completely ignores. And speaking of the voice actor, he's pretty much the only voice in this game who I'd heard before playing this game. He voices one of the main characters in the uh, Telltale Walking Dead games, which I only played the very first episode of. Anyway, the comic book analog for JP is actually tied into the next part of Jenny's misadventures. Yes, I did plan this out. So, after Jenny leaves New York City, she has not seen or heard from again for 15 whole issues. Hundreds of pages. But when we do see her again, she is running in terror from a wall of little gremlin creatures who look an awful lot like recolored darklings. She runs out into the highway and sees a Big Mac truck coming towards her and tries to wave it down for help, but it turns out it's also being driven by a murderous gremlin. Eventually, she manages to get to a payphone where she calls up Jackie, begging him to come save her in the town of Wormwood. Spelled with a Y, W-Y-R-M, like a dragon. But there are, are no dragons in Wormwood. Jenny's call actually goes right to Jackie's answering machine, and when he gets the message, he immediately cancels the night's masturbation plans. That's literally what he was doing when he gets the call. And he goes out to talk to Butcher Joyce, who points him towards a voodoo practitioner friend of his, named Mandolin, after the first thing he ever killed a man with. I guess before that, Mandolin just didn't have a fucking name. Mandolin says he can get them to Wormwood. Doesn't explain how, but uh, he and Jackie hop in a car and go on a road trip. Weird little fade out and fade in there. Guess they 
had a hard time masking low times in the Vendetta's mission. But anyway, Jackie and Mandolin are just driving along and suddenly they just appear in Wormwood. Mandolin never explains how or actively does anything, they just get there. Because Wormwood is a magical town that can appear anywhere, swallow up random travelers, and kill them. Because it loves to murder people, all of its denizens are horrible murderers. So our heroes just kind of wander around, defending themselves from constant onslaught, mostly from humanoid enemies. The gremlins that Jenny met are just kind of a weird aberration. Eventually, they are confronted by the sheriff and the mayor of the town. And the sheriff is holding Jenny hostage with a gun to her head. They explain that Wormwood was an old western frontier town founded by Antonio Estacado, the weakest man to ever wield the darkness. He brought out a whole bunch of outlaws and especially murderous settlers to the site of Wormwood, then promptly lost control of the darkness completely, which then proceeded to slaughter absolutely everybody and leave them in a state of undeath, where they could never die and they could never leave Wormwood, which was completely wiped off of the map and now just sort of travels randomly in its own little pocket dimension waiting for people to accidentally stumble in so that uh, the denizens can kill them. They've grown tired of pointless, sporadic murder, but lucky for them, they overhear that Jenny is bringing the latest Estacado their way. So they hold her hostage to try and force Jackie to destroy the little bit of the darkness that is keeping the town of Wormwood extant, which will set them free, allow them to rampage across the entire world killing absolutely everybody. It's a biblical reference, you see? Wormwood is one of the first stages of the Revelations Apocalypse. So that's that's what they're gonna do if Jackie will free them. And if Jackie doesn't, they're gonna kill Jenny. So Jackie sure is in a tight spot, huh? How is our intrepid hero gonna solve this moral quandary? Hold on, shit, they got more guys coming. Get ready, they're on the way. What Jackie does is he sends in an army of Darklings. They slaughter the uh, sheriff who is holding Jenny hostage. It's a temporary slaughter. He's, he's eventually going to regenerate, but Jenny is free. She runs over to Mandolin. Then Jackie just creates a whirlwind of tentacles and Darklings. It's basically just a blur of colors for multiple pages, you can't really see anything happening. And at the end of it, everyone in Wormwood is just gone. He evaporated the whole town, all the denizens, everything. He basically just solved the problem. That That's fucking it. Jackie tells Jenny that she should come stay with him for a while because Wormwood could come back at any time and kill her. But uh, no, it never returns, it's just dead. You can laugh, old Scratch. But I'll be coming for you. Flesh is weakness! So that's the anticlimax ending of that little plot cul de sac for the darkness. Jenny does head off again on her own, and where does she end up? Why, Gotham City, of course, but that's a story for next time. For right now, we need to finish this level, and this last part is very difficult if you don't put the black hole right there. You cannot get up onto that platform that those big pile of guys just uh, ran out onto, so they will shoot at you for the entire time you're doing the rest of this area, and we don't really have very good guns. We have shotguns and SMGs right now. We can't really pick off guys that are on a distant railing like that. By far the best way to deal with them is to drop a black hole exactly where those uh, guys are spawning in. Makes things a lot easier. Basically just repeats the first phase at this point. Despite the fact that JP Drummond has the bomb, the black hole, the ultimate of the uh, unique powers, he is mostly a support character, and the black hole is designed to sort of make up for his otherwise lacking offensive capabilities. 
His unique passive talent is called Destroy Heart Healing. Uh, your guess is as good as mine as to what that actually does. But it probably heals nearby co-op uh, allies when you destroy a heart. And a bunch of his talent tree upgrades are dedicated to helping uh, co-op players. His Midnight Stick, his unique darkness weapon, it will cause enemies to glow purple when they're targeted. And even if they're behind cover or shielded or heavily armored, when you fire the Midnight Stick, they go flying into the air and become vulnerable to executions and all sorts of further attacks. It's not great for damage, but it is very useful in other ways. Taking an enemy out of combat or setting them up for some uh, fatality. It's pretty neat, actually. Of course, Jackie's gonna end up getting the black hole in the main game, but we already know that when he presses the Y button, it does gun channeling, so we'll see how it activates differently for him. JP Drummond's black hole is actually a lot better. But hey, we are just about done with this warehouse mission. The Brotherhood must be destroyed. Next time, we'll meet the final character, Jimmy Wilson.